Hi guys, this is Cindy and Michael from Part Time Permies, and we have a few people in the room already. Your mom just jumped in. Yep. Yep. And Incent Shop and Curie from Built on the Rock Homestead. How are you guys? Do we have volume? I guess we should ask that first. Looks like we do. I hope we do. Um, how, so I guess sound check. So oh, how much did you do the whole pasta demonstration live? I did. It I was know, about an know, hour. I didn't know how yeah. much. You kept you live, you were live for most of the hour? For the whole hour. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. Yeah, so I got your whole demo on the pasta, um, including some of the breaks where, so you started and then the kids were doing stuff. Yeah. And Jamie's youngest was instructing the other kids she's who good. joined in. She's going to be really, oh my she's going to be a really good homesteader or baker or whatever she does. She handles the animals. She butchers. Yeah, she does everything, and really I don't good. know, what is she, six, seven, something? Oh, she's older than that. No, the little one. Oh, the little one. Oh. The little one. The older one's good, too, but yeah. Yeah, the little one was instructing the, all the other kids who joined in. Anyway, we'll yeah. get to that. Yeah. Um, white picket fence is in the room. Hello, hello. Okay. Clearly, the live worked. It was classic food TV. My mom yeah. watched it, therefore, <laughs> she didn't do it. She opened up a package of pasta and cooked dinner. That's exactly, oh, no. how, that's exactly how food TV works in the real world. Yeah. <laughs> But it was our pasta. <laughs> it's terrible. So it's still working. It's still good. That's too and funny. chicken and noodles is definitely the papadel with chicken yeah. is one of the best things you can do. Yeah. For sure. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. Did anyone? Yeah. Linda Taylor. Hello. Hello. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And the white picket fence joined us for the They're live. They definitely in there. Well, there. we saw them with. There were uh, only a few people. We were chatting with them with two families. Yeah. Yeah. They were moderating two families. Live. Day, live, live stream. stream. Yeah. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, I think two family were actually still live while we were live there. So there were two live uh -oh, streams. Oh, Curie going. can hear you over the AC. So that means somebody came out and fixed her AC. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> finally got somebody out there. Awesome. That's good. Hopefully it didn't cost too much. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be getting a generator this week. Friday, they're supposed to be installing a generator, a backup generator. That'll be awesome. Hi, so Diana and run, Susan. That'll run our water and other things. Pretty much run everything, but the most important thing is to keep our water going. Yeah. And the business going. Some basic going. refrigeration for some... I don't carry too much yeah. stuff on hand, but I, anytime you lose something, it's a loss. So, yeah. yeah. So, I have um, a few more people joining in. 13 Moons and Diana, Justice Acres and Susan. Um... But if you guys missed the live show or were not well, at... I did the whole. I was wondering how much they were there. They did the whole six and a half hour live stream. Yeah. Wow. They just kept it going. Yeah. Yeah. I just, but. And I think they might be doing that at each event. They're they going do, to. but that white picket actually watched the whole thing. You must have been working on other things at the same time. Yeah. Multitask. Well, yeah. she had both of them going um, at once, and I'm assuming that's she. Um, anyway, <laughs> so I think I've done that before. And Food Force Permaculture. Wow, more and more people join in. But yeah, so if you missed the Hoot Nanny and weren't there to see the demo, pasta demo, or you missed the live while we were doing it, it is up on our channel. So that was, I guess, the one video we have this week. I have a video coming up. I meant to do this week, but it was just way too busy. That was a request from Tina, who I haven't seen in the room yet. So I will work on that this week. As well as the Hoot Nanny video that we'll put together. He's got a window unit. That's fine. We did a window unit for a long time in our house in New uh, York. Of course, it wasn't that hot. But, yeah, it's amazing how much you can get away with just a window unit yeah. to get cooled down occasionally or get cooled down get at one least room. at night yeah. or sit in there and do work on a computer or something. Yeah. And, of course, then when you go back out, you get, get used to the heat and then it feels Linda wants to go to Hoot Nanny next time. You should come. You should definitely go. It's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. It's just growing and growing. Little girl rocked that demo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was our friend so Jamie's Jamie. So, Jamie, their two daughters are really sharp. Um, yeah. They have a five acre homestead with all kinds of animals. They don't have a channel. Yeah. But um, he's been featured on other people's channels, including, including ours. the December pork. Um, November. November pork event. Yeah, um, which I probably released in like January or something. Yeah. January, February. So, that was with a whole lot of the local crew. In yeah. fact, almost, I think everybody, everybody was there. Except for... Well, yeah. So what we mean by everybody. The Pratt Family Homestead was at Jamie's place last fall for the pork Stephon, butchery. Stefan has Instagram and he's really foodie. Um, mm -hmm. He was there. Uh, our Hodgepodge Hodge Hodge. Homestead was there. 
that 1870s homestead half was of there. Half of no, them. Well, I'm talking about last so, yeah, fall. Yeah, today half or half, yesterday half. All these people were at, we actually initially either met them at our place when we um, hosted Justin Rhodes. Or Hootenanny. Or at Hootenanny year the very first one. year. So this so, is year three. So this is kind of like a core group that does keep getting together in our area to help we each other out. We try and support, you know, the, the, the Hootenay is really the Pratt's putting it together. They yes. do most of it, but we all try and do our help part out and make, help make it successful. And Homestead Dad. And Homestead Dad, yes. Yeah, Homestead Dad, too. So everybody was back together. Yeah. But so yeah, like, Jamie's kids are, um, they're really, they're really good. And Jamie's got a culinary background, a military mm -hmm. background. And so they're in pretty good shape. They're doing, yeah. they're building a whole food forest this year and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, they're doing a lot. Um, and Jamie, yeah, th so those were, that was Jamie's younger daughter who kind of took over and helped instructed the other kids as they joined in the, uh, the pasta demo and attempting that. So they had fun, I think. Um, I don't know if all of them actually went home oh, with Susan pasta. Actually, before I got in, Cindy was there, yeah. of course, but I, yeah. Yeah, I didn't get in until about three, three thirty almost. 3 yeah. 15. Yeah. So yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Hoot Nanny, if you guys can make it up. There were people from min three groups from Mississippi. I know of two of them, but I was told was there, there were three. three. I knew there were people. Aldermans were there. Yes. And the other fa one of the other families um, I definitely met, and I don't remember their Happy name. Happy Homestead. Was that the one from Mississippi? That's yeah. a new channel I met. Um, there, there was another channel that came up from Mississippi, a smaller channel. I didn't channel. realize there was three. Yeah. Um, Aldermans are going to have to start their own Mississippi, Hootenanny, or otherwise. Because the Mississippians are coming to Michigan well, that's for That's fine. We don't mind that. <laughs> no, we don't mind that. And they probably are happy to get out of the heat and humidity and join our heat and humidity. <laughs> right. It wasn't terrible. It was it actually bad. summer pleasant. And we had a good breeze, so. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good it was. good time to travel to Michigan in July. Definitely a lot of fun. Are you planning to do a sheep butcher with Justin Rhodes in the fall? We um, have not consulted. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> we have not consulted with them. On any projects recently. Um, and I don't think we're doing anything this fall anyway. Yeah, we had talked. There's some talk about doing something um, in for, July or August, which I declined due to my business, uh, due to my busyness and also suggested due to the high heat, humidity, flies, need for ice that I recommended that they not butcher in the summer. Because obviously, most people butcher in the fall yeah. um, and send away if they need to. Um so I don't know what all, but I know they did have sheep. I don't think they have enough sheep on there. No, they're going to get them. They're going to get them. They're going to get But they don't have finished. enough right now. There was talk of sheep. There's talk of more hogs first. They've recently just announced yeah. that they're going to get some to finish. That. So, and to finish by fall. So we're open to the collaboration if we're invited. And then, of course, we need to get schedules to work. The problem is I'm due this fall. So I'm not sure yeah. that will work. We're not available for anything until winter. Yeah. Uh, and then I have a gap in the winter. And then once I get into my pasta season, things are busy. Yeah. And only getting busier. So I have limited times. I have to step away for almost a week. Yeah. So I need to do it in very um, specific time frames, um, even if the invitation is out there. I have never done live sheep. Uh, obviously, a lot of the activity, we don't handle large animals. So I always leave that up to or, uh, barnyard the animals actual, up yeah. to those that are more comfortable with it because we don't the actual kill part have yeah. any experience um i mean i could do the kill but as far as handling and getting them ready i'm not used yeah, to no. working with them um and then uh, as far as breaking them down a lot of the aspects are very similar um of course uh, but then and i i can always do a little additional research but most of the steps are similar if if you want to know that cuts of meat even between chickens and, and land animals are not that different although they're different enough so you, you mammals mammals you yeah. can piece it all together and so while you cut and i and i know enough about i've cut whole lamb and roasted whole lamb so yeah i would be totally up for it that would be fun lamb you have to be a little more careful because they can get strong the fell which is that uh, membrane between the skin and the fat the um, that fell and the fat can be quite strong based upon how they're raised aging and you need to be a little more attentive to remove some of that if you find it's going to be strong and that's where that laminess can show up that a lot of us are not used to and therefore we don't like it i'm not a huge fan for really really gamey um so that that's a consideration some of the organs are a little more gamey but a good freshly processed lamb even the kidneys i think people love it's a delicacy they are lamby they are a little bit 
Um, they have a stronger flavor, but handled correctly, they're very, very tasty and desirable. In fact, most of the world mostly eats lamb and goat when it comes to large animals. Yeah. So um, I was just reading some of the comments as they came in. But yeah, I mean, we've been, we will continue to partner with Justin. Yeah, as things I mean, if, work they give out. Us, if they give us an opportunity to come and hang out, we can do it. We'll, we'll definitely as, do it. It's, yeah. a, it's a ton of fun. Hi, Asa. Uh, as we've said before, and we we're talking with some other people, they're a very down to earth, very real family. I mean, there are parts of life that obviously they don't share everything with, um, uh, yeah, but with they, guests or with, with they their share channel, lot. but they're pretty open, pretty normal. And when the camera goes off, because we've hung out with them early in the morning, late at night. They're um, real people. They're very real, and so are the Hollers and Art and, and, Marie Aubrey and, and everybody we've, uh, yeah. and the Pratts. <laughs> you know, they're it's very, um, very normal people. More normal than than anything else. They just have a I camera would, out. Yeah, I mean, we know the Pratts the most, but uh, I can speak yeah. to on camera versus off camera. They are very similar on camera and off camera. Justin is himself on camera, but he ups the animation a little bit. But it's still him. And he works it's, and he works a little bit at that because he'd yeah. prefer to be a little more introverted and quiet and um, do his things. But he's he's really focused all the time and yeah. kind of on task. And yeah. Night food for us. But um, um, and the kids are totally the kids. And Rebecca's just about the same all the time. <laughs> She's yeah, so, no, she is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So we had a whole lot of fun at Hoot Nanny. I didn't get a huge number food of pictures. Food for us. I do chores. All right. Have a good week. Yeah. We just did. <clears throat> just watered our chickens and checked on everything yeah. ourselves. Yeah, I actually got this l literally finished pictures for tonight, uploading and everything within two minutes of having to go live. So we are, because we just got back from the Hoot Nanny this morning. So <clears throat> uh, we camped. The Hoot Nanny, by the way, for those of you guys who don't know, it's just a big hangout. It's not like as big of a, oh, hi, 1870s. Is that Todd? Or I'm guessing, but yeah, anyway. home, um, home from Hoot <clears throat> Nanny, but um, no. So uh, for those of you guys who don't know, that 1870s, Todd was there at Hoot mm -hmm. Nanny, uh, but uh, the it's just a big get together. It's like it started off as like a potluck. It's a of, potluck. It's more like a family reunion or yeah. a church picnic than you know, or a club picnic than anything else. So yeah, that's yeah. The, the bulk of it. And there's more and more little bits of demonstrations and and then a couple little few, few tents and some people booths. that make wares and sort of homestead things. And yeah, uh, we brought out some pasta because that's what we do. And there was some mittens and knitted stuff. Bandana and Grandma was there with her mittens and aprons. They're pretty well known at this point. Yeah, and then two family homestead had some T-shirts. Um, Lisa Sutton did a, uh, canning, pressure canning I would like discussion. to say I've never done pressure canning. I know a little bit. Of, I've yeah. never actually done pressure canning. Yeah. Done awesome. hot water bath. And she gave away a, a pressure canner as well, That's which we cool. did not win. But that would have been fun. <laughs> that would have been fun. There were a lot of giveaways. Um, we gave away some pasta and so it was just a big hangout. And the crazy thing is... Oh, Rachel's I, coming and she's doing dishes. So. Okay. Yep. yep. Uh, the crazy thing is I didn't get pictures of anything at the actual pavilion. I got video. So that will be coming out. So I don't have pictures at the pavilion tonight. Or, to, yeah, to show you tonight. But um, some people, it, since it's at a campground, some people camp the night before and or the night after. So we did that, and we had a little campsite with our little tent, but a lot of people had RVs and stuff. A lot of RVs, but yeah, yeah. I mean, tent works good for us. It's easy with the two of us. We're simple on that. You know, it's easy to put up. I wasn't down. there Friday night. I had to run Saturday market, so I came out in the afternoon. And I got there at 9 o'clock at night Friday night and went over to say hi to Mike. I was like, can I recruit a few people to help me unload? Mike Pratt. <laughs> yeah, Mike Pratt. The other Mike. <laughs> Not my Mike. Um... And I was like, can we get it? So the tent went up in like literally five minutes, I want to say, because we had four of us putting it together and putting it up. It's so easy. Um, we the had, weather was good. It was, was it? Yes. warm but not swelteringly hot. It was a little bit humid. It was easy breakfast. It never got cold at night. There was no rain, so yeah. it was easy camping as possible. Yeah. You brought a candy stove to make the down some pasta. I really did that for the boil water for the pasta this morning we got up a little later because yeah. i had been up really early in the morning we stayed up fairly late 
So it's like, breakfast. well, we got to get a fire going. We got to pack them. I'm like, no, we don't. We have a candy stove. Why are we going to build a fire to cook four eggs? Yeah. So light the propane. We got it right here. And that's yeah. the only thing we're going to do is make some eggs for breakfast. Yeah. And then I like, actually turn it off and we'll pack it up. I did build a fire for my you egg did. breakfast on Saturday morning. If we had more time or we were doing something else, we would have. Yeah. Yeah. So I figured last year I had this amazing um, realization, which I did this year, that so we're on five acres, and we talked about this last year, <laughs> and our neighbors have ten, five, ten, two acres. So we're semi-rural, and when we go to the campground, it's pretty busy. They weren't as full as last year, but they're pretty they busy. Were pretty so full, there's yeah. a few hundred people, yeah. tent and trailer, and so everybody has their usual little trailer spots that are used all weekends, which yeah. all clear out on Sunday morning. They're almost empty when you leave. And I'm looking around, it's like, it's fake camping. We have more light, more people, more noise. Than we have at home. <laughs> all bunched together. It's like city living and everybody. And it's like, it's fake camping because we're more out in the open. Okay. To at give home. some perspective to that, we've both, we haven't done outward bound, but we've both done but it's similar. it's easy camping. So. No, yeah, no. But we've both in the past done the rustic camping style um, with our college. They like had a week, kind of, a week on a trail with your pack or maybe a, one refill and, and no a tarp, no tents, a tarp, not a tent. Yeah. So, and I did that for three weeks. You did that for a week. I did it over a spring break where yeah. it, in the Smokies and it was cold or Appalachia. It was cold. So I would we say were getting frost at night. So talk yeah. about uncomfortable at the, in the night. And by the day you're shedding off clothes because it was 65 or 70, 70 and we weren't used to it. And you're hiking. So um, that's, yeah. yeah. So, and you're hauling everything with you. Yeah. So, um, so, our idea of luxury camping is the tent with an air mattress. Um, it's pretty good. Yep. Yeah. Trailers are nice. We've done trailers with my family and your family. Yeah. Uh, trailers well, mine, and all that are fun. Motorhomes, but yeah. I haven't done it with my family. It's actually either. easier for us because all the setup and the cleanup and yeah. uh, doing the tent is, is works right now. Yeah. Although we wouldn't mind, we wouldn't mind having a trailer at some point. Well, our dog wanted to come with us, yeah, and we that couldn't was bring her with us because we didn't have a place where we could store get, store her, keep her during the day. We can't leave her in the tent all day. Um, if she freaked out, she'd like rip it apart. But and she, they weren't allowed to have dogs at the pavilion at the site. So there were a lot of people who brought that, dogs. That's the advantage of having a trailer. Yeah. So we'd have to buy a trailer for a dog. And if we bought a trailer, we would need a truck to pull it. So we'd have to buy that. My plow truck's a heavy duty truck, but it's very old. And I'm not sure it's it's reliable you know. or trailer ready. It's great for plowing. It's But yeah. yeah, we would have to upgrade to it. Actually, we could pull a small vehicle, a small um, like a trailer, a small to medium size with our Honda Pilot. Yeah. Um, honestly, we wouldn't. Yeah, I'd probably so, do okay. Cindy tried to get some gloves also, but there weren't any left. And, and, well, no. The, the dinosaur the, or the, the dragon. The finger. They, they had the dragon ones. Yes. Um, The dragon ones are knit ones, which are very pretty. And, like, I wanted some that I could use doing farm chores. So I didn't want those. Um, But she makes, Bandana Grandma makes um, gloves out of, or mittens out of uh, recycled sweaters. Wool sweaters with. Uh, lining inside, which are really warm. So if you ever get a chance to get them, definitely. You can mail order online from her. Yeah, you probably get yeah. a hold of her. She'll she'll make them even custom make them. Give her some time. Yeah, and um, so what I was looking to see if she had, which she didn't actually have there this time, but I might see if I could order some from her. Were just some fingerless mittens that were made out of the sweaters, because what I like is I had a pair of cheap ones that were fleece that have fallen apart. But um, I do like to use them while I'm working on, you know, chicken chores and stuff in the winter. Um, but it's nice right, to so have. The other ironic part of fake camping for white picket fences, Pratt's live less than five miles from the <laughs> campground. Yeah. So they get their entire fifth wheel, their truck, their <laughs> kids, everything, you know, ready to go. They go around the block. They park. They do the event, which is great. It works perfect. It's a nice, it's really nice campground. And then they actually can run back over to their house to check the animals if they have to. Yeah. Uh, or if they really he have did to get the, something. He did. He did the yep. nighttime chores. He did the morning chores. And then they, they hooked up their truck. They lo did the whole load up. Tomorrow they're going to have to do the whole clean down. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. But no, I mean, it's a whole lot of fun. Is Green Dream Project, are they new with us? I don't remember. I, don't, I think they've been here before. They've been here before. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. Um, not paying attention enough. I, I'm not sure if recently, but okay. yeah, I think, yeah. But, but hello, you yes. joined us. Um, 
So, so yeah, that was a lot of fun. There was the kids got into something. A lot of kids. They all had a, good a lot time. of kids, and I caught a picture. Um, they were doing the get up challenge um, all day. They were practicing it and practicing it, and this is in the evening after uh, the actual hoot and nanny. We were kind of hanging out at the Pratt's little campsite, and they were still doing the get up dance. Um, at the campsite a couple more times so got a little picture there there are there is going to be a video on the get up challenge um at of everybody who did it at the uh uh hoot nanny and i think i don't know who's going to release it i know um todd was actually gathering well, some videos there, from so can, from different people he could probably yeah. Fill in the details. But uh, he was gathering videos from different people who caught the official one um, so he could di get different angles, and that will come out. So that'll be a lot of fun. A dragon or a dinosaur a or dinosaur. something running around in it? There was a dinosaur dancing in it. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and it, they were so into it. It was hilarious. It was, you know, you got all, we even got Mike Pratt on video. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you guys are on Instagram and are following our Hodgepodge Homestead, I think has released a little clip from that. Okay. And someone else released a little clip that I saw on that already on Instagram, which is uh, the preview to the full did thing. Did you get I a guess. picture of Smudge? Or? Oh, I did get a picture of Smudge, but I did not get the picture of Smudge to uploaded. Put it up for yeah. Yeah. So um, we like big dogs, that. and so Smudge yeah. is a Pyrenees Saint Bernard. Mix, mix about that three years two family. old. Uh, pretty good sized dog, still young and pretty uh, pretty thin, but uh, very white because of the Pyrenees, white and liver. Yeah. Uh, huge head, like a Saint, more of a Saint, Saint Bernard, Bernard head. head. So yeah, fun. Yeah. Um, so we got to meet Smudge. Smudge and two family was camp. They were camping right across from us, um, and Smudge is kind of their, uh, um, uh, I guess what do you call it? mascot for their channel so if you see on their t-shirts and stuff you see a big picture of this big saint bernard like head uh on all their stuff so that and is they've had a bunch of pyrenees yeah. in the past too so they've had big dogs yeah. like we have yeah yeah so we got to meet smudge um and those kids did do a great job and so did the adults who joined them i will say lisa suttons was in there um the pratts were in there Homestead Dad was in there. Aldermans were right in it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, um, and a whole lot of kids in that. So we'll get the get up challenge. I think we'll probably come out later this week. Keep your eyes open. I probably either the eighteen that eighteen. The white pickets. Yeah, you're you're getting together with. They're heading off to where they say Missouri. Is that where they're off to this week? I think there's another event happening. Yeah, yeah I think they're probably going Wait, to Doug and where, Yeah, where you? Yeah, yeah. Doug and Of course. So yeah, like that, so. I think they're going to that next. Yeah, so they're on the road for a while, and they have like, yeah. their granddaughters with them. They have at least one granddaughter with two. them. I'm not sure if okay. the other one was. Anyway, with so they're entertaining them the for a week time. or two, and then they're continuing on. With, yeah. Uh, for yeah, their summer travel. Yep. So they are actually. I asked them how many of these events they're going to, and they're trying to make all of them. That's that's fun. Well, they're yeah. they're fully retired. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, so they are so actually RVing for most of the summer and trying to go to most of these events that are happening all summer, and they'll probably be doing live well, streams. Well, because Daryl mostly does interviews. It's perfect because yeah. he, he does remotes, but he can actually do lives. Yeah, he can get people on, and he got us on. That He got a bunch of people on. And they got like a nice truck and, and trailer, yeah. and they're, you know, it's fairly comfortable, especially for the two of them or the four of them. It's, it's yeah. yeah, it sounds like a fun summer. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we did get to meet Smudge. Yes, he is the mascot. So, I'm um, trying to see if on Facebook. Okay. Um, trying to see if I mixed, missed anything else. So, we had all that all day yesterday, which was a long day, but a heck of a fun day. Um, we had last night, we're hanging out longer, and you made pasta. Um, made pasta some dish. carbonara. Yes. Made a couple big pots of carbonara. Uh, so, what we figured out last year is I did a smoked brisket, which is hard to, it's like, all right, how am I going to do smoked brisket and noodles, which, how do we... Uh, what are we doing this year? We kept yeah. it simple this year. Uh, well, really I good. didn't have a lot of time, so I'm like, what's really good, what's simple, and we try and use things that... Um, like the brisket wasn't from a, a local beef. I didn't have that, but I'm trying to find things that work well. And so we used a lot of our eggs Yeah. and we decided to do carbonara. We did a video incidentally about a year or more ago 
yes, on carbonara. Exactly. And we've been sort of, we've had good results serving it at the market with bucatini, the really thicker long, noodle thick, uh, spaghetti with a hole in it. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, that works. It's easy. Um, you know, I pay a little bit of attention to cost, but I was mostly like, what can I pull off coming off a market? What can I preset? Well, a couple pounds of two pounds of bacon, a bunch of eggs. I got the pasta. I make that fresh. It tastes great. Not everybody. A lot of people haven't had it, and yeah. it's also replicatable. Really Beef and easy. noodles takes a lot of time, and and a, a brisket. You know, it's fifty bucks for a brisket um, and stuff. So, um, so yeah, we did that. So we did cooked up some carbonara down at the pavilion then up at the campsite again mm -hmm. and showed people and, and gave people just a good carbonara with some good cheese on it and said hey you can do this on Wednesday night and half the people have chickens and eggs yeah, so yeah. it's an even better deal like um and a lot of people have pigs too like I just probably talking about uh he's like oh that was so good and he's like I can do that. He's like, I saw everybody. I'm like, yeah, yeah there's no secrets. You can do it. It's really it's easy. Just don't overcook and it. You actually did that twice because they were wrapping up down yeah. at the pavilion when we were doing dinner. So we, you made it once down there, one batch down there for the people who are still down there. And then went back to the campsite and did it again up there. And you had a mini audience. Well, I think what works there. well, we're doing it in the dark up there, which yeah. is... I think what works well is because I get in later in the afternoon. There's been a big potluck, tons of food. Everybody's eating. They're kind of full. And like, well, you know, if I bring something for the late afternoon or the evening for campers, people are a little bit hungry and kind of provide a part of a dinner mm -hmm. that that works um, because maybe people have eaten all the good stuff or whatever. They're bored. They want something new. So I think I will probably try and continue doing a one pot, trying a lot of times pasta driven, but doing a one pot that's uh, maybe we'll do like do you like Sunday gravy, the Italian Sunday gravy? That's a little Ooh, more work. I have to yeah. bring that out and then heat it up. Yeah. Of course, it's hard next to heat year. tomato, heavy tomato sauce up without burning it. Are you going to remember this for next year? I don't know. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> Might have to have a reminder. But yeah. but yeah, doing a big one pot pasta meal that, yeah. uh, you know, just anybody who's there and we make tons and if yeah. a little left over, we just toss it out. It's fine. Especially when yeah. it's, it's some eggs. Yeah. It's, it was, yeah. No, it was good. A lot of food there. A lot of good food there. Um, and I was trying to, yeah, so we had that, but afterwards, so this morning, um, we decided we were packing things up and saying buys and all that. Um, and Mike did ask us if we wanted to visit for a little bit before heading back. A couple of people that were out of the area, yeah. a couple of others said, we'd never been over to the press. Yeah. So, so we're like, yeah, we'll stop by for an hour. We actually were there for probably a couple hours. And again, I was bad. I only got a couple pictures, but I did get a picture of the prep pigs. Pigs are lounging. It's getting kind of warm today. So yeah. They so were... they were in the shade and mud. Um, apparently their tarp had actually ripped loose and they got a little bit wet in there. So but they're, they're enjoying um, the mud. But they were enjoying the cool, definitely. So the prep pigs were looking happy and um, we got a little tour. tour. Of the barns and the fields and some, yeah. Matt, especially a bunch of the guys we were going around. Mike was talking about what they're doing and have done and what they want. Plan to do and what all they want to do, which is what we all, when all people get together that's kind of what you talk about what your yeah, idea what have are. you done what are you trying to do what was a total disaster or what are, what do you think you're going to do yeah. uh, and kind of show up the property where the if it's all work in project progress for everybody yeah and it, you know you get ideas from that so now i was starting to get a headache so i went it was really getting hot so i just went into the shade and grabbed a water while you continued you even on go that. see their horse Jenny's i know horse. i uh, we didn't get close. It was just over in the past. I love horses too, but yeah. It's a big horse. Yeah. It's a good size horse. I would love to go riding I think they want to get again. a few more horses potentially. Jenny definitely Wait, does. Uh, and it sounds like, like it he, might actually, they might be moving that way a little bit. <laughs> it sounds like she's, she's breaking Mike into the idea a little bit. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she wants to, um, uh, is it, now I'm bad because CJ and TJ, the one's her son and the one's the horse. <laughs> no. um, I think it's CJ the horse and TJ's the son. Yeah, I think so. Uh, <laughs> but CJ, um, she wants a companion for him. So um, just so. On, oh, they just so cut fresh. <laughs> remembers as a kid. Uh, uncle suddenly had a farm and working on the farm, my grandfather and uncle, and smelling that. But we're like, God, oh, it smells so good. And yeah. um, and they just had uh, hatched about eight chicks this morning in off oh, the side yeah. of the 
the new hay, which are like, well, we'll leave them there for a little bit, and then we want them out because we don't want them just hanging out and right making a mess in the hay. But yeah, yeah. CJ the horse. Yes, thank yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going. I was very close to switching those two names, um, but uh, so yeah. So you got the tour there. I, I maybe next time or one of the next years, I'll be able to meet. CJ the horse, um, because I love horses, but, uh, I never owned one myself. I rode a little bit as a kid, but, um, and then, you know, they had the goats as well. Did you get to see the goats? Yeah. We went down to the bottom barn. Um, yeah, we were in, a, in yeah. around there and so yeah. they have, they had the bantams and the ducks and yeah. showing some of these water troughs and some of their little test grow projects that they're playing, and the commercial, playing with. You went into the commercial barn too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they got a little tour there. So I did a quick walk around and got a little, uh, uh, Patty Alderman had some sandwich stuff with them. They were about to head back and they were, uh, taking the train. So they were waiting until they had oh, to go to the train. train. Yeah. yeah. They took the train to Chicago. If they do that again next year and then take the, um, take a rented a car over, we should invite them to visit us here because yeah, we're over, on the if way they back. Want to visit or overnight or whatever. We could definitely. Yeah. Do that. So we might have to extend that invitation. And that's out. with their grandkids. Is that? Is it... Yeah. Tom, uh, Tomas uh, is their grandson. And yeah. I think they had one other with that's them. Because their kids are grown. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. And Tomas came last year too. Yes. But, um, and then Patty had fresh tomatoes. Their tomato season is finishing in Minnesota. In Minnesota, in Mississippi, they're finishing up. She's starting to talk about fall planting. Yes, yeah, she is. Well, I mean, everybody is. Yeah. Well, I they, mean, they had a weird. We they kind of had a rough. They had kind of a rough season, like everybody. Some yeah. things went, some didn't. So she's ready to start a new. Start it and grab some of the things that didn't do so well and and put them back in for the fall because they get a full fall season. Pregnancy brain is real, except for the fact that CJ and TJ will always get mixed up in my head just because until I know what TJ stands for, I probably will keep getting it mixed up. I know CJ came with that name, CJ, um, the horse that is. Uh, so I don't think they know what CJ originally stand for, for the, or stood for, for the hmm. horse from my understanding, but I should ask them what TJ stands for so I can remember, <laughs> but, um, yeah, letters, similar lettering, it won't stick very well, um, whether I'm pregnant or not. So I'll put it on that, but sure. Um, we got new phones set up this week. So if the pictures look better, the yeah. Instagram, the spot pictures. I had we, some pictures last week. From yeah, that. we both yeah. have, we both actually have clean, clear Yes. phones new finally. Upgrades. Um Oh, and we got to hang out with their dogs, too. So that was the other animals we saw. And this is Sarge, if you don't know the Pratt's two dogs, Sarge and Georgie. This is their older dog. And we were joking because we said Sarge likes to plant dogs in the uh, garden bed. He's uh, planting. He's a planted dog, yeah. He's a planted so dog. So he was digging. And we're like, is he looking for a run? And we're like, no, he's digging. Because that's cool in off. the shade. Yeah. And we're like, he's digging to go settle down and take a yeah. nap where it's cool. Yeah. So got a little picture of cute Sarge. Um yeah, so it was a lot of fun, and then we headed back here. My dad was taking care of the dog and cat, and our neighbors took care of the chickens. So I want to make sure we got back here to relieve everybody. But um, that was basically the entire weekend. Uh, I did have a couple other pictures from during the week, and these are with the new cell phone. So we had, I don't know if you follow on Instagram or not, but little dragonfly that visited us in the greenhouse. So we got a lot of wet and now it's gotten a little hot and dry again. So the dragonflies are, are back, coming back and the moths and the butterflies are getting out for the summer. And we had a little injured, uh, um, butterfly as well, as well in there. I think this is an admiral butterfly. Correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody got a bite out of it. Yeah. Somebody injured it, but, um, but it was hanging out in the greenhouse. I still saw, I checked in the greenhouse today and I did see the dragonfly. I don't know if it's the same one. The same type is still in there. And then um, I didn't see the butterfly. So maybe he made it out anyway. Uh, oh, yeah, Michigan Mike was there. I know. We were so busy. We had a, I had a hard time because um, before you got there, I was trying to help. I was oh, trying so to I eat. know you said you are going. Yeah, some yeah. of the people I didn't. One I person, didn't get a chance I to say hi to everyone. I saw people. On, yeah, and I, was, I actually yes. just sent a note to somebody saying, 
Uh, sorry, I saw you from a distance, but yeah. Yeah. So you, so you were there for twenty to thirty minutes okay. and had a grandchild. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh hmm. boy, congratulations. Um, yeah. Uh, so we, yeah, I was when we were setting up. It was it ended up being just busy. So tried to try to grab lunch when it was first starting, and then I never went over there and looked at the buffet. No. <laughs> we set up. I moved around stuff. We yeah. set up to do our demonstration. Um, and that took some time. Then we set up to quickly cook some food, but while some people are getting ready to leave. Yeah. And yeah. So, yeah. And I got, and I also got stuck at the booth because a lot of people were wanting pasta. So I was over mm -hmm. there instead of mingling with everybody. I did a little bit of that, but didn't really get a good chance to go around to everybody. Um, and then you came in and did the pasta demo and it just like went so fast. Yep. Um, there was so much going on, but yeah. So next year, if we're setting up the same pasta tent, I'm going to have to just tell people to come over to say hi to me, um, and introduce yourself. Well, you can also, stuff. we've got sides on the 10 things. You can always set it up and close it up and close and open and close and, and open. say there's yeah, a couple, but, yeah. couple hours, uh, to, two groups of time where you're available. Uh, we could do something, something like, like that. that. I don't know. What I did was that every time I started going to like, chat with someone or something i was keeping my eye on if people were checking out the pasta and whenever i saw someone go back when the market's so back. like that we go yeah. and visit people or buy yeah. things to do the same thing just yeah. keep an so, eye so if somebody comes over you can be available and answer a question exactly. and do exactly. whatever so but yeah congratulations michigan mike 16th mm -hmm. grandchild oh my goodness um yeah oh <laughs> Oh, so, you know, so the other thing is, we need to do a giveaway today. Yes, we do. It's the end of the month. We haven't done anything yet. And I actually, um, if you guys follow on Facebook, I did post, I shared a post by Mike Hogue. Mike Hogue had posted something on um, biointensive growing, permaculture style growing, um, and comparing that to like market gardening and stuff, um, and how people have complained that. You, permaculture, biointensive permaculture growing is hard to expand to a market level. But his argument on the whole thing, if you read it, is um, since you're doing biointensive intensive growing, you can actually get, especially with the perennials, you could get like 10 times the yield out of each plant. So technically, you only need a half an acre to grow what you need to uh, to cover, like say, the equivalent of five acres as market garden if you set it up right, but it takes longer to set up. So he did this little article there. Um, he was actually quoting John Jevons. So mm -hmm. one of my thoughts was we've given away that book before. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, and I don't have it right here. I should grab it, but uh, how to grow more food. We than gave it away thought. last last month or the no, month a couple before? months ago. A month, two couple, months ago. Couple months ago. We did yeah. give it away already, but if we, I thought we might give that one. Well, away. I always think that's a good one. Yeah. Um, because you know, we're moving into fall gardening again and replanting and rethinking of how things go. See, and Cindy asked me why did I really bring toilet paper in my in my backpack or whatever. Yeah, in my suitcase. Uh, we were just here for a day, and they have the whole shower house and everything else down at the okay. campsite. I said, because when it's busy at a campsite, you never know when the toilet paper runs out. Nobody's coming to but bring it in. But they have, like, multiple stalls. They have never seen them run out there. But if it ran out, there would be a problem. So you just throw one in, and or then you, you bring it home. Or you could just go find some mullen. You could. <laughs> well, poison ivy in the process of finding your mullen. I, I, actually, I didn't see any poison ivy on the back side of our thing. I saw There was a, one little, very one little. One little one? Last year, the back of that, some of those areas were coated. Remember? Yeah. yeah. Right I saw more berries, like young berries, than poison ivy. Yeah, there was there. two berries right yeah. there. Um, so. Which tend to push out the poison ivy eventually. <laughs> so anyway, got distracted on that one. <laughs> and yes, probably Cindy or somebody taking care of baby, which means yeah, having so, the tent and having a more specific you, place to hang out and do things might actually work. And yes, people can just come to her. Yeah, I think that might have to be. And then I have no I'm idea old. whether I'll be going to market or just taking the day off to go. Uh, what we did is we had to skip one market. I didn't yeah. have coverage. Yeah. The second one, so we took the shorter market, uh, worked worked fine, got me out a little faster. Otherwise, it'd be like 5 o'clock when I got in. And I... Um, yeah, got back here, turned around, reloaded, 
with different stuff. Um, checked on the dog, checked on your dad, right and then back. had Hold to uh, yeah. turn around. So, so I got one market in, um, and then because it is one of my big work days, it's my big retail day. Uh, even though we've got wholesale stuff, and it's kind of hard to give give that up. Uh, try and be there every week. So, uh, so we did that, and then I got over there. But next year, I have no idea. Maybe I'll be able to take the whole day off. Oh, I almost tripped over the chair. Landed in the chair anyway. Um, yeah. So I was actually I was going to get the book um, because I thought of where I left it, <laughs> um, and it's gotten so dirty. It was from in the, the garden. barn for a long time. It was in the barn. It was in the basket that kept going to the garden because it has a lot about companion planting. And what works well together. So I kept bringing it to the gardens for that. It's also particular. good for pre, uh, it has for information planning. on setting your late, your late gardens, your ground cover and crop cover. Insects, and pests, and plant control. A little bit on hooping, I think, although that's mostly in the four season, three season, that's, four season that's gardener. In the, um, but they taught, they mentioned, so strategies for extending yeah. Begins a little bit in here and then continues with some there, of the Elliot Coleman stuff in detail. Yeah, Elliot Coleman does the four season harvest. Um, this the succession planting and how often a lot of that is in here. If you're like, here, can I yeah. still plant broccoli and get something, or can I plant more beans? Because some there's or discussion rotation. about somebody, can I plant more beans? And I was like, if we just plant more. My thought is just plant beans. They're super cheap. They grow pretty just, fast. And if they fail before frost, who cares? If you go again. Chances um, are beans are going to yield yeah. for you. And peas, too. Yeah. Um, soil temperature conditions oh, yeah. for vegetables. Not everything germination. will germinate. Some of your lettuces won't germinate. If it's too hot. Yeah. So, yeah, this is an awesome book, you guys. So if you don't have it, it this is one of our very first go-to gardening books um, between this and the Elliot Coleman books. Uh, they are the ones we keep going back to over and over and over again and using all the time. They have the science behind yeah, the Yeah, the how to grow more vegetable white picket fence. Yes. Yes. Um, and which uh, was, who won that last time? It was uh, probably in April or May. Maybe Claire, Claire or I Carrie. Think, and she got in there right away and started. Carrie? I don't know. Carrie's here. Carrie, did you win this Claire. one? Um, yeah, it was just in uh, a couple months, months ago. Yeah. yeah, so that was, we were turned on to that book very early on in New York, and that is really our number one go to continual yeah. go to book for checking on stuff. Yep, yep. Yeah, the two year mullein, it's got a really long stalk with the yellow flower on the top. Yep, you'll have that. That's a, it's really easy to spot because it's like taller than everything else around. We have it. a lot of two year mullein running around. Uh, it grows pretty aggressively in our area. Yeah. A lot of sandy soil and new turned soil that it, it just shows up everywhere. Yeah. So anyway, I think we will do a giveaway. <laughs> We're bouncing around so much. Sorry, guys. So we will do a giveaway today because it is the end of the month. And we've been bad. We've been doing our giveaways on the last We're week of the month every month. We're supposed to do it at any point. Maybe we have to do it again next week. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to. It's supposed to be random week in the month. So the choices are we'll direct send this book from Amazon or wherever we think it's best to send it out yeah. from to you if the winner picks that. Or you can select two varieties of pasta. pasta. If you already have or don't need this book or whatever yeah. else, your choice. And the rules are if you won in the last three months, you cannot win this month. So that and if does you're, take and care if of... you're related to us, you probably can't win either, which is <laughs> one person. Well, but okay. I think they're stacked with pasta and, and they don't have a garden. No. <laughs> I don't think your mom ever sends out the guesses no, she on the answers. Yeah. Um so, okay, so the people who are the winners from the last three months who cannot win this month would be Linda Taylor, Claire Burke, and Carrie from Built on the Rock Homestead. Everyone else is eligible. Those three, if you want to make guesses, you can, but we can't count your guess as the winning answer. Um, but whatever you like to do on that. Beans are pretty hardy. I mean, if your truck got so, so hot or it got a little too damp and... They, you know, that, I guess that's the problem, oh, but yeah, I, I'm not surprised. Okay. Here's crazy. They're not beans. They're peas. The shark peas. Okay. Yeah. Last year I lost them. I couldn't find them anywhere. You found them probably two weeks later. Just two or three a, dozen at most. In a bag. Just, yeah. A little bag of shark peas. This is an Umbrian field, uh, cooking, drying Dry and cooking pea, pea for yeah. like soups and stews. In the garden you found them. So they had been out in the sun in a clear plastic bag mm -hmm. baking. Is it? Ziploc packet. Yeah. For a couple weeks in the garden. 
I didn't get them planted last year. We got them planted this year, and we have they grew. They grew better than any other pee week. So Carrie did win. She did win the book. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you probably have one. I think they're on version. What version yeah. is this? One further. No, she has two further because I think they're. So on they have been nine. updating this since I think the '70s. This is yeah. seven, so I guess it was nine. This one is the seventh edition. We've had I this think for over ten they're years. On the ninth edition. Yeah, we've had it since. Like, so the start you of the year. have updated and even more information. Yeah. They just keep refining and adding. Uh, to it yeah so you're you're even better off yes so how to make your own flats oh my gosh there's so, so much you're talking about when you're into the 70s and 80s and they're trying to reclaim land in california uh, it's the beginning of the natural and what became the organic movement or the back to land movement was sort of mid mid 70s. from the center coming out of that and technology and stuff this was some of the first serious Let's bring back old style ways and let's improve on them or re -under let's and understand them scientifically. Yeah. So it was in many ways a, a starting point for a lot of what is now our modern home yeah. homestead and organic and specialty gardening. Yeah. Um, you know, thoughtful gardening. Yeah. So it is updated even more now. Ours is definitely an old version, but it I keep using it like all the time. So I don't know. I give it another version or two, and we might have to update our version. Yeah, I don't know what we'd have to see what's different. But yeah, of course, stuff is good, and that doesn't really change. So yeah. So anyway, I do have a question that I'm thinking might actually be a little bit on the easy end, but um, uh, so again, rules on this last three people who won. April, May, and June can't win this. That does include Carrie, who won this book before anyway, um, and. It's the first person with the correct answer on our screen, which I know sometimes it doesn't look the same on different people's screens. So it's our chat screen. Whoever answers this question correctly first will win it and give. then we'll have you contact us within a week of where you want, which thing you want, so and the, where to send so it. So if you were born in Sacramento, they, I know in the four it tells, they started growing in almost what they thought was barren, unusable desert or deforested areas. Mm -hmm. I want to say it probably wasn't far from Sacramento. I'm just off the top of my head trying to remember where they did yeah, a lot of this this original work. And it was a combination of farmers and scientists. And, yeah. and um, the other thing about this book, I think the newer versions have, they added, they made the title even longer. They added something with less water than you ever expected possible, yeah. too. So I think it stemmed out of that going in California. Extreme need yeah. to also, yeah, to really look at all your resources. Yeah. So, yep. Anyway. That makes sense. So you guys ready for the question? Um, the question is, and it has to be the full name, which channel hosted the Hootenanny? Their full name. Um, and, we'll, it, of course, we have a delay, so it's going to. If Which? they're in here, they can't win. No, I don't think they're in here. At least I, I haven't I seen, seen them, them chat. Them <laughs> that would be popping funny. Out, it's not... <laughs> that would be hilarious. Yeah, it, what would be even funnier is if they didn't spell it right. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've made an official release of the new date, no, right? They, no, they, they said it us. Okay. to us on video. Okay. Um, there will be a July, later July weekend, which will be the fourth annual Hootenanny. Next 2020. year. Yeah. But we'll wait for them to do the release. Yeah, so we got the date, and I, did, I basically... Wow, we got real long delays on that. Yeah, we did. There we go. Pratt Family Homestead. I have the white picket fence with the real name. <laughs> Pratt Family Homestead. Okay. Um, so, yes. I don't think we have to be picky about the the or not, because I'd have to look it up and remember if there's a the officially in it or not. I think there is, but yes, anyways, <laughs> white picket fence. So your choice, either the book or the probably pasta. the ninth edition. Yeah. Um, send out direct new copy, not our copy, <laughs> and um, or you can uh, two two passes. Either way, you need to um, let us know. Let us know through a text or Facebook. Email Facebook. You, I mean, I think the easiest way most people have been is through Facebook. You can mm -hmm. shoot us an email to um, our uh, pay, our Gmail account, which is part-time permies at gmail.com all one word on the part-time permies no hyphen or anything um so yeah just let us know which one you want and where to ship it and we'll do that yep. <laughs> dancing around almost breaks a hip don't break a hip <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah, just let us know. We're in choice. hoops in the sixties where there's now total development. Well, interestingly, Long Island, which was potatoes, grapes, vegetables, much of it, yeah, is where they put all kinds of houses. Fairly nice, some of very nice large houses. And then we had a hurricane come in. They're all like, we don't know why they all fell over. Well, people knew a long time ago it was floodplain and hurricane prone, and so you grew vegetables. Yeah. And grapes or put up. Hoops. You may have a um, little tiny cabin to. Yeah, know, or you or did a little cabin. But anyway, they were, they yeah. were that's what. Oh, there still is some well, of the yeah. uh, out on Long Island because um, it's very good vegetable growing conditions. <laughs> Pasta. She has the ninth edition. I would say, I thought you were just talking about it. You had <laughs> okay. it. So, right, yeah, well. so, yeah. So, just go on the webpage for the pasta. By the way, anyone wanting the webpage for pasta, it's West Michigan Pasta and Provisions We do have some additional items. I have some very some flavored uh, vegetable flavored items. So if you want to consult on something, yeah. otherwise let me know. Uh, or if you want us to pick two items, I'm I'm happy to pick two things. Yeah. If you do that, tell us if you want long or short or yeah. both, one or, or the mixed. other, yeah. or flavored or not, or egg or not, and yeah. I could. Figure so out just, what seems, makes makes good sense and things that I'm not things that I want to get rid of things that I think are really kind of our premium items that people want. So <laughs> I don't have much I want to get rid of. It's just yeah. So yeah, you just like, oh no wait sorry you know I did not okay I'm not sure what you were saying no I did not win the it does not have okay yeah, oh wait where's white picket. They put the the in. The. The Pratt Family Homestead. It doesn't have the the in the name. All right. So are they, they conceding? Cause are you? Because the second second one who didn't have the the in the name was Susan Smith. Uh, she I didn't capitalize. Oh, no. Pratt, uh, Hoot Nanny. Pratt Family. Oh, you put Hoot Nanny in there. Uh, no, homestead. Uh-oh. Pratt Family Homestead. That's wrong, too. Um, <laughs> I have to pay attention. Uh oh, oh no, oh no. I would say, like I said, I didn't even know if there was a done or not. I think we're okay. Those are expendable. Yeah, 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 we're fine. They're not trademarked, so. Yeah, you got it. You don't got worry it. We'll send you pasta. <laughs> they're not trademarked. I don't know. I don't think they're, they're trademarked. <laughs> they might be. They wouldn't be a bad idea. That would be fun. You have it anyway. Um, so, yeah, the Pratt Family Homestead. Pratt Family Homestead, I guess, officially. Um, but you no, know, you're good. You got it. Um, you are the closest, uh, Susan was close to, but she put the hoot nanny at that. And she had Pratt family home said yeah. hoot nanny. They are the host of the hoot nanny. Yeah. It was the channel I was looking for, but yeah, no, while you pick a fence, you got it. You choose your pastas. Um, and we'll get those shipped out to you. And I should write After down. All, they should be rewarded for watching six hours of two oh family and, hoot nanny, and live hoot and nanny. ours at the same time. All the, live at the same time. I need a pen. Um, excuse me. Um, so you got it. We'll send it out to you. And um, okay. White pick fence. Thank you for so being we awesome. we gave away though. what? Two four packs? Three four packs? Gave away a bunch of four packs and stuff. Well technically at, Pratt's gave away Pratt, two that's right. they, packs. They, had they paid some. for those. They actually um, had, yeah, they had some cat open cash for vendors. Yeah, so they had two one, $20 one giveaways. One voucher went to us. Both vouchers went to us. Oh, both vouchers went to us. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and then we had we had a giveaway. We had a bag giveaway. And then a bunch of people that bought a bunch also, we threw in all kinds of extra stuff. So mm -hmm. the fun thing with that is we make it out there and available to a lot of people we don't see and, and want it. And then we try and give really our best best possible pricing and get extra yeah. extra product and different things to people too. So, so yeah, bags and extra bags and tote bags. And Jenny's things. parents are so funny though. They I, there's a few people who do the stock up now. Um, they did a big stock up in the fall did. when we, I guess it was in November when we got together. Yeah, that's right because they did I a forgot. big we, order. We did a pretty, yeah. we put we had a specific order that I packed out yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah, so they were. That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just got to get more th into the east side of the state, some small stores over there now. Um, Susan Smith was sitting with Sherry while they were doing the live. Mike, you talked to my hubby right before oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. did the pasta demo. Uh, cool. So, um, <laughs> live in a, at the hospital. Oh. Well, there you go. Well, hey, you were just waiting anyways. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, there's just a few people in live. And I guess, you know, I don't know if they watched the whole thing, but um, since that went up just last night, I mean, just in under a few hours from when that went live, Doug and Stacy. Uh, oh, yeah, you got a comment on, from Doug and Stacy. Yeah. Who were um, probably checking in on a bunch of Hoot Nanny people. Because they were wanting to come to Hoot Nanny, but uh, from what, what I hear, but because it was the week before yeah, theirs, they be, can't. That would be that crazy. That would have been nuts. Um, but yeah, so I know they were wanting to come up to. That it. would be. Wow. That would be huge. If Doug and Stacy actually announced they're coming up, they're going to have like 500 people show up. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, but it was a lot of fun, a lot of good people there. And I should ask you, because we didn't even get into it, and we only have a few minutes left, but did you want to go over anything pasta-related, or does anybody have pasta-related questions? We didn't get a lot of them live, because we only had a few people in the live um, during the pasta demo, but if you guys have pasta-making questions... Go review wanna, the video. <laughs> Go yeah. review the live. No, but, um, but I, yeah. you know, if they have questions Yeah, because we were doing that. something, by the way, to clarify, we were doing totally different from what yes. I actually make and sell. I was making home-style hand-mixed or I pr don't do it in your KitchenAid unless it's under a, a pound because yeah. um, it's so stiff. You will break your KitchenAid unless you have a specific bread, like a bread machine for making a two-pound loaf or bigger. Mm -hmm. Uh, two or three pound loaf and you're making bread because the dough is so hard. Uh, you can hand hand roll it, hand hand mix it the old style way. So we're showing how to make egg handmade and then either hand rolled and hand cut or rolled on a pasta bike. So the traditional style. What I do is a drier, even harder pressing of pasta. But, yeah. uh, they're both really good. But those are that's the first step. You have egg pasta, no egg pasta. And then when you make this hand style versus the press style, and the hand style always has eggs in it. Yeah. You need uh, to a get binder. to hold it together, you don't have the pressure and things that I can do with the press pasta. Yeah. So that that's your four four immediate differentiations is your method and egg or no egg. Yeah. No. And then of course you can always do some of the seasoning stuff if you want. You can to. well, flavors are flavors. You can yeah. always put flavors in. My recommendation personally is limit flavors. It's so much easier to get good flavors into sauce. You get brighter, bigger, fresher flavors. They get muted when you first you put in all that flour, and then you have to boil it, and it has to make it through all of that before. So, have a bread hook with my KitchenAid. Uh, smaller than two pounds is it is it better to roll? I would do no more than a pound, even with a bread hook. In the KitchenAid. In the KitchenAid. In fact, I have a five quart KitchenAid. I have a six quart, four, five, six quart. Uh, I have a five quart uh, one, and I can barely squeeze out a two pound loaf of bread. It really bogs down, and mm -hmm. I would not, um, um, yeah, I would not do a um, more than a pound. And then I would stand there and make, if you hear it stop or really bog down, be ready to shut it off so you don't damage your KitchenAid, which is expensive. Um, it's just so dense. Dough hook is. Fine. Yeah, I would start with a dough hook. Yeah, I think I do it with the dough hook. Yeah, and you can break a paddle too. I mean, we've commercially you can break the paddles. Yeah, yeah, because it gets so stiff. Very expensive. Um, and then Noah's Ark said oh, she shocked when screen, yeah. shocked when they they saw that you had there was a thousand dollars. So machine. your classic pasta bike, your little cranky deal, uh, which is what you had there. Which is what I had there. New was about. $40, $45, eBay, on Amazon, you'll find yeah. it. Atlas makes a lot of them. Uh, you can find them frequently used online or for $15 or $20 garage sale. You might pick it up for five. My recommendation is check that all the parts are there. Yeah. That you have the crank and ideally the clamp. You can probably get around the clamp, but at least the crank. And then make sure that it has no rust on it because if it has any moisture trapped in it or has been washed, not clean with flour, or it's all gunked up with grease, it's probably not going to work. Um, so, but you could want to steal. There's lots of people bought these things, never use them. I don't even use mine a lot. Uh, a couple Did times you get a it year. cleaned out after the kids were using Oh, it, it was very clean. Yeah, okay. it was fine. Lots of, yeah. and you clean it with flour. So, um, yeah, they float around garage sales for five bucks. Don't yeah. be surprised. Um, but then you can get a bigger one for a restaurant. So mine's this size, but if you want to do a bigger sheet, <laughs> Mine's like this size, about six, eight inches. Yeah. You can do a bigger sheet that's a little larger. Those are going to be a couple hundred dollars and they're hand crank. Uh, but then there's motorized ones you need for each size, but especially that bigger size. And if you get a motorized one new, 
They're pretty robust. They're heavy. They need to hold on the counter. And that would be for a small size, medium size restaurant that's making feature pastas and raviolis daily or every few days. That could be in the thousand dollar range, but you might yeah. get lucky and get one in good working order used for a few hundred. Yeah. But it's not going to be fifty dollars. It's going to be yeah. three or four hundred dollars, and, that, and that's going to be a good deal. But I would only get that if you're making pasta all the time, multiple times a month, large batches for get-togethers or functions, or you're trying to run a small restaurant or do a, you know, something like that. It's not worth it. And you can always hand roll everything. Yeah. Uh, a little thicker noodle, and then hand cut it with a knife. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Which you did the first part of the demo. Um, yeah, and, and so you can do it with nothing other than a rolling pin. And, yeah, absolutely. Um, and you can do multiple batches of one to two pounds, and then you can cut them down into quarter, you know, half pound batches to roll them out, or quarter pound batches. And you can, you know, with you or a few people, can make quite a bit of pasta. A quarter pound of pasta is kind of an average, pretty heavy serving. Half pound is a very big serving. Yeah. And remember that half pound or you know whatever you're using will double Expand. almost double in volume when you cook it. So you know a quarter pound of pasta dry becomes a half pound of pasta cooked almost and then whatever you add to it, that's a lot of food. Yeah. So So Susan says uh, Yeah, so salt, good question. So your hand rolled pasta traditionally has a couple may have a couple drops of olive oil and may have a little bit of salt in it. I'm gonna tell you those are both for flavoring. And it's not a bad deal in a hand rolled pasta if you want to put a, a little bit in there. Neither one of them are helpful. They're actually both harmful towards getting the best chew. So oil is a laminator. It mm -hmm. all right, you know, that's what you call a shortening. When you shorten dough is you break down the gluten by putting in oil or shortening to shorten it so it becomes softer and tender. Therefore, you're compromising flavor with a very you need to put a tablespoon in tea or teaspoon. Yeah. And uh, it's not so big of a deal, but uh, and it may make it a little easier to hand work it. Don't forget, eggs have a lot of fat in them already, so mm -hmm. you're already shortening the dough with the eggs. Um, so um, not necessary, not going to make it any better. Salt, incidentally, will also interrupt the gluten structure on a microscopic level um, minimally, and you won't see a big difference, but I've seen specific studies on it that say, no need to put salt in. Best deal is to heavily salt your water, salty I like the high. sea, so that when it absorbs, the reason you make it so salty is when it's absorbing the water, you're absorbing a salted water and you're seasoning the pasta with the salted water, but you've already got a full development of gluten. So um, I used to always put in at least a little olive oil when I made hand pasta. Uh, reading that article, you, yeah, you, you may not do anything, just use good flour and yeah. And your few drops of water if needed and your eggs. Five eggs is your classic. Uh, five eggs to about a pound. Um, watch your egg sizes. That's kind of on a large egg. Uh, for a half pound batch, I recommend two whole eggs and an egg yolk. And a lot of batches, or if you're doing ravioli or richer things, you may do like, you know, like two or three whole eggs. For, and then you do a bunch of yolks. You do two yolks for every whole egg, which is still less volume. So you can get it even richer. And then if it still seems dry, you spatter in Just very, very water. small amounts of water until it comes together. Uh, and it, as it relaxes, when you let it rest, it will become much softer. Um, Petty Alderman was saying, oh, my gosh, I can't believe yeah. how much softer, how much wetter. And I said, that's why you want to make sure it's stiff enough it holds all the flour. But if you start thinning it anymore, you're going to be unhappy when it rests and you go to cut it mm. or, or roll it out. Um, I'm just giving through. Yeah, clean it with flour. Clean your rolling pin with flour too. When you're, whenever you're doing any of your pie doughs or anything else, it's a wood rolling pin. Take excess flour, rub it in there, and let any of that butter or oil or fat egg that's gotten on there just absorb and scrape it in there. You can also take a bench scraper or the back of a knife and kind of brush or you know towel but use flour to absorb and clean and wipe it down obviously you get some microbiotic growth yeast and things will grow on flour but it's so dry uh, if you it's not going to get a lot if you wash a rolling pin as long as if it's a metal or stone that's different but if you wash it a wooden rolling pin wooden one it's going to get the pores are going to get water in it and they'll start it molding. may crack and you have a very high chance of it not drying properly and getting mold in it once you get mold in it then they're really not usable. So, so yeah, don't do anything to them. Do the minimum. They'll do great.
So Aim High made spaghetti last night with our pasta. Okay. So, so did my mom. Yeah. Well, she made chicken and some, some type of chicken and pasta. Yeah. Um, um, freezing pasta. Yeah, pasta freezes is great. So you can dry it, but drying has the potential of cracking if it dries too fast, which is most common. Um, ultimately, if it dries too slow, it may mold. And in between that, if it doesn't dry completely, which is usually a couple days, and that depends on your weather, um, if you put it into Ziploc bags or canisters, it may still have residual moisture, mm -hmm. which could either not come out and cause it to crack later or could cause mold during storage. So to get around that, if you have freezer space, yes, pasta freezes great. Um, you can make it into little nests. Make sure you flour it really heavy with extra flour, which will fall off in the water. Just use a lot of water when you boil it. Put it into Ziploc bags. Of course, it becomes brittle and can be broken up. Could freeze or burn a little bit, but uh, generally you can freeze uh, pasta. You could even freeze the puck of pasta uh, before you roll it out, but I do find that the freeze thaw causes it to get a lot wetter, so I think it's mm, best yeah. to go all the way, make your noodles, and throw them in a Ziploc bag, very well floured, freeze them, but once you've done that, take them out of the freezer by handfuls, and put them into the boiling water directly. Do not thaw them out. They will get too wet and they'll probably, they'll, it's guaranteed stick together. Yeah. So cook them from frozen. You're just going to add a one to two minutes to your cook time. There's very little difference and you will see, unless they freeze or burn, you will see no difference in quality that I'm ever aware of going. Uh, and there's a lot of commercial pastas, especially pastas and raviolis are sold frozen. Yeah, yeah. So go frozen direct in your water. You'll have a great, great result. So yep. you could make, especially homestyle thick noodles, you could make five pound batch, which is a ton of noodles, pack them away in Ziploc bags, loose in a chest freezer, um, pull them out by the handful or by the baggie, and then go use them. Don't do skinny things like spaghetti. They're going to break them. Get all broken up, probably. So White Picket Fence says they are going to make gnocchi this yeah. fall. I like That'll gnocchi. Fun. So potato gnocchi is there's all flour gnocchi, there's potato gnocchi, there's some that you try and put as much potato and as little flour as possible, and there's some that have a lot more flour than potato. So there's a lot of different ways to get at it. Flour gnocchis are kind of like a dumpling; they're pretty stiff and chewy, mm -hmm. whereas potato gnocchis can be very, very pillowy. And typically, by the way, you want to brown after you quick cook them until they float. You pull them out right away, and you want to brown them in butter. Uh, because they're so sticky, the dump, you, know, you use a brown butter or even an oil uh, and you brown the sides and get some flavor mm -hmm. on them and then coat them in that, that butter in a real hot pan to finish them. And of course, sage is sage or herbs, brown butter. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes people like to put pumpkin with it or other things. That, or make pumpkin gnocchis where you put some pumpkin puree yeah. in with your flour and your egg or your flour and your. Um, Potato. A lot of times they have a couple eggs to help bind. So yeah, lots of ways to make gnocchi. They're really good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do Olive Garden. <laughs> City had a very bad experience at Olive Garden. <laughs> yeah, I got very sick after Olive Garden one time. Have not been back since. Although I used to like them, but yeah. um, and it was probably just the one place the one time. But eh, no. Most of the time it's the food handler, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Either how they handled the food or the food handler themselves and how they handled their hands. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. So, anyway, we should wrap it up. And gnocchis unless... can be frozen, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Again, heavily flour them uh, on the outside um, and freeze them in Ziploc bags or in a sheet pan. Then crack them off a sheet pan, which we do in a restaurant. Put them into your bags or your solid containers that won't get crushed. And then cook them from frozen. Mm -hmm. They will take a little bit longer because they're thicker, but... Uh, they'll cook from frozen toe, so you could batch them. So gnocchi, there's a lot of ways. Your classic gnocchi yes. is people roll them off the back of their fork, and they thumb them around, and they get the little indent. In the, or, uh, But there's other w ones where people just kind of do a little mash or a little pull. Uh, or they, they can't use see a, what you're doing with it. Or hands. they use a cavatelli <laughs> board. Um, and then in some of those restaurants, you just do plugs. You actually take... Um, Roll them out into thin strings, or usually you can't pipe them. They're too they're too uh, dense to pipe. But um, you roll, you just put them in long lines. 
long sheets and you just go tup, 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 and you just cut them with a knife and you call it good and you keep it as a pillow. Yeah. Uh, so there's a few ways to be really rustic and fast or to be a little fancier, but ideally the ridges and that little notch help hold the sauce. So uh, like, yeah. if you can take the time to do that, that's fun. Yeah. So I think offense says ex-husband's grandma was from Italy and she has the recipe and she didn't make it, but she was so fast. Well, when you've been doing it your whole life, they're way faster than I am. Um, yeah, you watch some people, it's just amazing because it, yeah. it's a regular activity. Yeah. So, yep. yeah, I think we should probably wrap up because I'm still exhausted from camping two nights in a row and I do have to work tomorrow. But um, nice pasta discussion. We will definitely be back next week at same time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, same place, obviously. I have a pasta making demo the next morning, Monday morning next week. Oh yeah, at KBCC or For a whole bunch of culinary instructors. So this was yeah. a real casual. We're not doing. We're actually doing a lot of the same things. Totally incidental. Yeah. Because we planned and said we'd do this demo six to nine months ago. All right, all right. And then I got asked to do something for a bunch of high school, like pro start high school culinary instructors, do a forty minute. Uh, pasta making demonstration. They asked me to do a simplified one like this. Uh, we've been doing some variations with some community classes. So I'm actually pulling it together and I think we're doing a simple tomato sauce. I need to do a more formal presentation next Monday. Oh, there you go. Um, your bed will feel awesome after camping for two days. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm back and to It's warm room. enough. The air conditioning is back on. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think we got into low 90s today again. So Close. Yeah. We left the AC on for the last couple of days with the humidity for Cindy's father was here just so it was comfortable and we were good yeah. hosts. Uh, otherwise, okay. it had been off for a few days as it cooled down. It was nice. We might have waited another yeah. day, but yep. got warm enough and humid enough, we put it back on. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we will say good night and sleep comfortably. The white picket fence will AC. get a hold of us this week. Uh, she already sent she did. Okay. a message. Um, where to send things. So. Oh, and I miss being able to say hello to Aim High. I know she yes. was coming out. So. Yeah, yeah. It was very nice to meet you, Aim High. Um, and yeah, so we will definitely see everybody next week. And I hope everybody has a good week. Nine o'clock uh, Sunday night, and my brain stopped working. So, we're gonna say good night. Have a good night, guys. Good night. <laughs>